So, you're interested in getting into Gunpla, you've watched UC Gundam's Beginner's Guide and my two volumes of Kits for Beginners, and now you're wondering what tools you need. Well, you've come to the right place. Or at least a place. I'm Yink, and welcome to what I'm tentatively calling Tools for Gunpla. Let's get into it. Now, this pile of stuff may be a little overwhelming, so I'm going to be breaking this down. First, we'll start off with the bare essentials and kind of spiral outwards from there. So, let's start off with the barest of bare essentials for building kits. Nippers, side cutters, whatever you want to call them. These are the essential tool for building kits. Unless they have touch gates like the entry grade, in which case you can just rip them off the runner, but you don't want to do that with normal kits. Arguably, you don't want to do it even with ones that do use touch gates, but it will pretty severely damage parts on a regular kit if you just rip them straight off the runner. As for my personal recommendation, I would say the Bandai Entry Nippers. They're only about 10 bucks, and I've been using them for about a year and I haven't had any problems with them, so... I would say they're an excellent choice, not just for beginners, but if you're trying to find another workhorse, these are actually a good option. Not to mention, given that they're Bandai, they shouldn't be too hard to track down. Now, aside from dedicated plastic model nippers, there are a few alternatives, though uh, I would advise against them unless you absolutely have to. Wire cutters. And, somehow, nail clippers. Now, to be completely honest, I have not been able to figure out how to use nail clippers to take parts off a runner. I've heard that apparently you have to basically disassemble the entire runner before you cut anything off, which just sounds like an absolute nightmare to me, and I don't understand why anybody would do that. I know that Mr. Hobby sells a specific tool based on nail clippers that is shaped to be able to take things off the runner easier, and I can't really recommend using that either. And as for wire cutters, they are effectively the same tool as plastic cutters, but they're a lot thicker. <laughs> and the problem with that is sometimes parts can be a little tight to the runner, and you probably don't want something this thick to cut them off. Though if you're in a pinch, it's better than the alternatives. <laughs> and here's a short but incredibly useful tip. When you're cutting parts off of the runner, basically cut as far away from the part as you can, right at the end of the gate where it meets the runner itself. It will cut down dramatically on the amount of stress that can happen at the actual nub mark, not to mention it's not like you can't do a second cut later to shorten the nub if you want. Now, you've gotten the parts off the runner, and you're going to want to get rid of the nubs. To do that, you have a few options. Let's start with the one I don't use, mostly because I'm lazy. You can sand or file down the nubs. This takes a while, though it does usually result in basically a completely clean nub. I, as someone who doesn't have that kind of time and doesn't care as much, just use a knife. I use a stock standard hobby knife with a number 11 blade, but there's a few others you can use as well. However, there is an alternative, though again, I'm not sure I would recommend it personally. And that is the utility knife, or snap-off, depending on who you ask. These are useful in the fact that you can just crack off the end and have fresh blade a little bit quicker than having to swap out a full blade. However, why I don't recommend them is that I personally don't find you get as much handling or maneuverability from a utility knife compared to a hobby knife. Now, another tip, when it comes to removing the nub itself, there is a specific way to do it. You're going to want to do the first cut, diagonally down, and then a horizontal cut the opposite direction. Now, you can just cut flush to the part doing it this way, Though, personally, what I recommend is leaving a little bit of nub left and then shaving that off gently until it's flush. Even doing that, you're still going to get a little bit of a color difference just due to how plastic flows into a mold. But this way, it will cut down on any stress. However, if there are still stress marks, there are two ways to hide them, or at least reduce them. The first option is just take your thumbnail and scratch the nub. I know that sounds silly, but it genuinely works and will pretty much remove all of the whitening in the plastic. Thirdly, you can just paint over it, but we're getting to paint in a minute. And the final thing to talk about when it comes to the knife you're going to use, 
you're going to want a cutting mat. Now I just have a cute little one from Vallejo, but you can get larger ones and you don't even have to use a specific cutting mat, just something so you don't put nicks in your table. Now before we move on to painting, there are a few little miscellaneous tools that I just want to bring up because they're useful. First off, part separator. There's nothing more annoying than not being able to get things back apart, especially if you forget to put something in. <laughs> I know from experience a few times, it's not fun. So get yourself a part separator, just a little plastic wedge. You can get them from uh, most bigger Lego sets or uh, Mega Blocks puts them in just about everything. Sorry, Mega Constructs now, isn't it? Bandai did also release their own specifically for model kits, though uh, they're not that easy to come by these days. But yeah, any plastic wedge, and you do want it to be plastic because it's soft enough that it shouldn't damage the edge of the part that you're separating. Though a small tip to make things easier to get apart, cut the ends of the peg, just cut the tip off at a slight angle, it makes it so much easier to get things apart. Now we talked about getting things apart, let's talk about getting things together. Tweezers. Just any pair of pointed tweezers. Though I would recommend putting a little something on the end if they're just bare metal since you don't want to scratch up parts. It makes it so much easier to apply not only small stickers, though again, personally I don't really use them for that, but also to hold small parts, uh, either for painting or just so you can actually attach them without having them fly off into the ether. And finally, if you do end up breaking something, you're going to want some cement. You can also use super glue, but the difference is super glue just bonds two things together, whereas cement actually melts and fuses, or welds, the plastic back together into one piece. Now, personally, I definitely would recommend limonene cement just because it doesn't have toxic fumes. Though I've heard the Tamiya stuff doesn't work super well, but this Mr. Hobby pen that I have works completely fine, but it also has the added benefit of being a fine tip pen, so you can apply it pretty precisely. Though, do keep in mind, it doesn't work on ABS. Now you have your kit cut out, cleaned up, and put together. Let's talk about making it pretty. Starting off with panel lining. First thing I'm going to say, maybe slightly controversial, don't use panel line accent from Tamiya. Its usefulness and effect is greatly overstated. It's no better than just using any acrylic wash. And it has the unfortunate side effect of sometimes breaking the kit. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to recommend using a panel lining Gundam marker. Now, there are other panel lining pens or markers that you can get, and they're not all that expensive. But Gundam markers are cheap and fairly readily available, so I'm going to be recommending them. Now they come in three main colors, black, gray, and brown. If you're only going to be getting one, I'd say gray. Otherwise, you can get all three. Black is more for use on darker colors, and brown is for use on yellow, red, warmer colors. Whereas gray can be used on pretty much anything. Now, personally, I just use gray for everything because I like how it looks, but you know, it's up to you. Also, you can clean up the edges of panel lining, especially using Gundam markers, by using toothpicks. Either wrap a bit of tissue around the end of a toothpick, or do what I do, which I find to be more effective and also a lot easier to deal with. Just glob a little bit of paint on the end of the toothpick, and that takes it off pretty cleanly. Though, do keep in mind that it works best on bare plastic, as the ink in a panel lining Gundam marker has the tendency to stick pretty strongly to whatever paint it touches. And finally, after panel lining, there's color correction, or uh, recoloring, depending on what you want to do, and that requires paint. Now a short digression before we get into paint and brushes, masking tape. You're not going to want to cheap out on this. Do not get, like, normal masking tape. The glue on it is far too strong to use on model kits. You're going to either want to get some frog tape, or specific model masking tape. I use Tamiya, and I'll be honest, it's probably the best you're gonna get, and it's not that expensive, so if you come across it, or uh, find it online, I would recommend picking it up. But let's move on to actual paint. 
there are a ton of different paints and I don't want to get into all of them, but you have lacquer, enamel, and acrylic. And within those you have uh, a bunch of different solvents for them basically. My recommendation is water-based acrylic just because it's easy to work with and uh, doesn't have deadly deadly fumes like some of the other paints. Personally I use Vallejo Mecha Color because it's basically easy mode. Amazing color, fairly strong paint for Vallejo. Once it's cured it makes a very nice vinyl-like finish which can still be scratched off but it is pretty resistant to scratches, especially for an acrylic. It's not the easiest paint to get your hands on depending on where you live, but if you shop around online you can probably get it for around retail. And finally, let's wrap this video up by talking about brushes. You don't have to get high-end brushes. You can use like Walmart or even dollar store brand if you really want to. The important thing is to get a feel for the texture of the paint you're using and make sure that it's not too thick. However, one thing you do want is a decent variety of brushes. You want a few larger flat ones that you can use for larger areas. You want some medium sized ones that you can use for details. And you want at least one small brush that you can use for fine detailing. Now you can just buy specific hobby brushes that are that size, but I've heard that brushes for nail art are functionally identical and like half the price. So shop around and try and get those instead. And well, that does it. That's really all the tools you'll need. And again, don't worry about getting all these to start. Really all I'd recommend to start is some nippers, a hobby knife, and probably a gun to marker, which shouldn't run you more than like 20 to 25 bucks. And if that sounds like a lot of money for tools, this may not be the hobby for you because you'll be spending a lot more than that on the kits. Most of these are one-time purchases and the others are annual at most, so supply costs won't reach anywhere near the cost of the actual kits. But anyway, that's all for this video. If you found it useful, let me know what you think down in the comments below. It helps with the algorithm. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Again, also with the algorithm. Subscribe, hit the bell. Go follow me on Twitter for updates and uh, memes, whatever I end up posting. Consider supporting me on Patreon to keep the channel's lights on and to keep making reviews. And if you want to chat with me or see work in progress stuff on kits that I'm working on, go check out UC Gundam's Mecha Hanger Discord. That's usually where you'll find me. And, as always, until next time, Happy building.